on this week's Talking with Topher. I do want to drink, and I am choosing not to, and that is what's most important. Instead of making people do the test what we already had in place, we have now lowered the standards so that you can make it. Is our military giving out trophies for you showing up now? And now let's get into episode 208. happening TWT fans it is so good to be back on this March 28th 2024 and I'm so glad you came back for some more and it looks like uh you know finally hitting over 2,000 subscribers so I must be getting that message out there I appreciate all of you I thank all of you for subscribing to the channel And of course, if you're new, popping by, maybe you got sent that link tree. Go ahead, click that subscribe button. It's the most important thing you can do for the channel, and it keeps me coming back week after week. So go ahead and click that subscribe button, all right? Also, give a thumbs up, leave comments, and do all the things that help the podcast grow, like sharing the link tree link. And then, of course, if you want your opportunity to be a guest or tell your story, well, you got to send an email, T-A-L-K-I-N, with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. Uh, go ahead and send an audio video or type it out, but send it over to the official email of the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N, with Topher at gmail.com. And then, of course, don't forget about my link tree. It gives you access to all TWT uh, platforms, social media, everything I do. So go ahead and be clicking that, following, and subscribing. But again, the easiest way to share this podcast and help me get it out there is by copying that link and sharing it with everyone you know. So go ahead and do all of those things. I greatly appreciate it. And with that all out of the way, let's get into today's podcast. Well, I have to say that things have been, well, I have to say the hammer, the foot, the other foot came down. Um, and, uh, you know, life throws curveballs at everybody and our addictions and our livelihoods sometimes are affected by these things. And I will have to say that my addiction as being, uh, tempted right now, um, with the amount of stress that I'm going through, I cannot get into details. I can't do anything like that, but I will tell you that one day I will explain everything and um yeah it's just something that cannot be talked about right now but unfortunately it is on my mind and I do know that when people go through stressful times um we like to go back to our comfortable spaces or crawl under a rock or start drinking or using again whatever your defense mechanism is for the stressful situation going on in your life Um, I want you to know that if you build stronger ways to deal with these things that you can overcome using again, um, I will have to say that this is extremely stressful and I do want to drink and I am choosing not to. And that is what's most important um, because it's not going to help me get through this situation. It actually will probably make the situation even worse, but at the same time, Um, I can't lie to you and say that I don't have these thoughts or these cravings, but uh, like everything else, um, in life, when these things happen, you know, you need to have a strong group of people to lean on, to be able, excuse me, to be able to call. Um, one thing I can say is that, uh, I called uh, my dad, and uh, it was kind of funny because he's like, 
um, I'm not sure why you called me. And uh, he's like, so I'm not, I'm not sure why you called me, but um, yeah, I guess I'm just asking you why. And I was like, well, eh, it's, a, it's a comfortable place. Um, I guess my parents have always been there for me during hard times. And when ta- hard times come a-knocking, that's just my go-to, my default, I guess I could say. Um, but it was kind of funny <laughs> in a sense, you know, he's like, you're 44. Why are you calling me? Don't you have friends? <laughs> and I'm like, dad, 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 I can't, uh, I, I, I got to tell you guys first. So, uh, <laughs> he's like, well, uh, I'll tell you this much. Uh, your mother thinks you need to grow up. And I was like, yeah, I kind of figured out. You know, what are you, what are you going to do? The parents always think uh, the kids are never grown up, even when we are full-fledged adults. Um, but that's just, it's, uh, it's all part of uh, life. And when um, things like this happen, you think sometimes that the world is ending. And it's not ending. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm having a great time. But I do have to say that everything I've learned over the last seven years dealing with my addiction, uh, doing jujitsu for nine years, uh, dealing with my inner ego, my self-discipline, and having all these tools that I've put in place to make myself somewhat of a better person today than I was, um, has really helped keep my focus where it needs to be and where it needs to be right now is figuring out everything to make this go away, which I don't think is going to be that difficult. It's definitely going to be pricey, but it's going to be okay. You know? And, and I think that's like one of the biggest things is when something happens, right. And it's traumatic or it's, uh, life changing. Um, and we think that it's, it's over. That's when a lot of people, uh, throw in their hat. And like I said, they start using and doing all these things again. And you can't, you can't do that to yourself because that's going to make it worse because you did so well here. And to have something collide with that, to have you, Uh, fall off and I don't know maybe having to start over again uh, counting days and months and years um, yeah it sounds it's 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 easy it's easy to do those things it's hard to keep on the right path when you think your world is ending and um, I mean I don't think my world is ending Um, there could be a a glitch in the matrix, I guess I would say. But at the end of the day, um, you know, life has all kinds of obstacles. Um, there's always going to be something very difficult to deal with. Um, it just depends on what you feel is difficult for you to deal with. Um, I will tell you that something like this is definitely difficult to deal with. But at the end of the day, um, you know, with the right people in place, um, it can all go much easier, um, overall, overall. Um, so what else do I got going on? Oh yeah. I was supposed to have a guest, um, on this episode. Unfortunately, uh, their car, um, malfunctioned. I think the ice storm that we got, Last night um, made it so that the car wouldn't start this morning, so probably a battery or alternator. It was really, really shitty weather. Uh, There's thousands of people out of power right now, and uh, we got here in Manchester uh, probably about an inch and a half of snow that turned into uh, just so much slush and water. It took me four hours to clean my damn driveway. I mean, it was so heavy, and the snow thrower was no help whatsoever, you know, you got to love that, you know, when you freaking uh, have a machine that's supposed to do the work for you and then, like, the weather's like, mm, we're not going to give you anything to throw. It's just water. So you're just basically pushing around a pond 
of slush and uh, with a shovel and man, it was it, it was it was it was shoulder busting. I guess is what I would say because my shoulder's on fire now. But so I guess because it froze overnight. I mean, the doors to my car were frozen. My door to leave the house was frozen shut. So I could see how that would be a problem. But I do want to let everybody know we're going to reschedule. If I have to, I'll have two guests in one month to make this up to everybody. But I did try to get a recording done. Unfortunately, the weather and uh, vehicles uh, caused it to not happen. So... Uh, we're going to reschedule. We're going to take care of that. It's a little glitch in the matrix like everything else in life. You know, you go, things just don't always work out the way you want them to. They just don't. And what we do is, is we drive forward because I still have to have an episode uh, this week. And uh, so I'm recording it for you all. So what I think we're going to do right now is we're going to take a quick break so you can hear from my sponsor. This March, go to Slow Down Clothing, your go-to destination for everything you're going to need this summer. Are you ready to celebrate in style and gear up for a sunny season ahead? Look no further than Slow Down Clothing for all your wardrobe needs. Whether you're hitting the beach, tackling yard work, or simply enjoying the great outdoors, we've got you covered and don't forget to use promo code t-o-p-h-e-r for an extra 10 percent off before you check out on your entire purchase simply visit us at slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com and start browsing our fabulous collection from women's leggings to kids tees and adult tees we offer a diverse range of apparel to suit every style and occasion but that's not all our hats are truly exceptional the superior embroidery and unique designs set our hats apart from the rest not to mention each hat features prints under the bill adding an extra touch of personality to your look. At Slow Down Clothing, we take pride in constantly updating and refreshing our designs, so there's always something new and exciting to discover whenever you visit our website. Embrace the season with confidence and show off your unique style with our carefully curated selection of clothing and accessories. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your wardrobe and make a statement. So what are you waiting for? Head over to Slow Down Clothing bigcartel.com and explore our latest arrivals and treat yourself to something special and gear up for an unforgettable summer with slow down clothing slow down take a moment and embrace the extraordinary visit us today and experience the difference at slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com and don't forget to use the promo code t-o-p-h-e-r before you check out and get an extra 10 percent off your entire purchase today all right and i'm back everybody um if you skipped over the sponsor commercial i get it but go and check out my sponsor i'm telling you they got great stuff um that really helps the podcast grow every time somebody uses the sponsor so please go be using the sponsor and don't forget about that promo code t-o-p-h-e-r for that extra 10 percent off the entire purchase not just one item the entire purchase all right so <clears throat> i really thank everybody for doing that and i thank slow down for being the sponsor for so long really has been amazing so um real quick before we get into anything else the shirts are available, everybody. So, there's the front of the shirt. And there's the back. So, shirts are available. <clears throat> uh, medium, large, and extra large. And um, because this is the first t-shirt I've ever made, um, so what I'm thinking about doing is, is, uh, I think we're going to do these at 25 bucks plus shipping. So if you want yourself, if you want yourself a talking with Topher t-shirt right now, um, I will sell them at 25 bucks a piece, $30 for the extra large and, um, Shipping and handling is the way that I have to do it. So 
Um, if you're interested, just send an email, T-A-L-K-I-N, with Topher at gmail.com. I'm very excited. I got limited colors, um, and they, he did some reverse print and some regular print. So just specify what you want. I'll let you know what I have. I haven't set up a link in my YouTube channel yet, but as soon as I can get uh, a couple more varieties, I'll start taking pictures and having links in the podcast for people to just regularly purchase the shirts. But since this is the first run, I do have limited colors, limited sizes, but $25 for any size except for the extra large. Those are going to be 30 and you will have to cover the shipping for now. Um, When I can cover the shipping for you, I will let everybody know. But right now, um, I'm not capable of doing that. So I appreciate everybody who is interested in the shirts. Thank you for letting me know. And now I'm letting you all know they are ready to order. And with that all being said, let's get into Topher's Topics. So my first topic today um, is this link between social media use and the desire to undergo cosmetic procedures New studies say. Now, what I'm noticing with all of this uh, transgender movement is that it is more prevalent today than it ever has been. And I'm not going to go as far as to blame TikTok for it, like the majority of society is doing right now. Do I think TikTok should be run by an American company? It's possible that that answer should be a yes. Um, But I also, I don't know. I've been using their app for a long time. Um, I've used all kinds of China-based ordering systems. So I've always dealt with using these things. But if you look at TikTok in China, they're not allowed to see anything of what we're seeing. And I th- I do believe that's because they are trying to shape our society into a weaker one because China's long game is to take us over. That is their long game. It's, it's, it's been their long game for a long time. They want us to fall. Almost every country right now wants us to fall. Um, but... I've been noticing a major, major uptick in people with these pronouns and these things that are being made up to be something that, well, to be something to you out there trying to tell us that we should call you these things. And it's just... I don't know if TikTok is to fully blame for all of this, but it does seem like over time, because now there's what? I I, I heard a a thing on almost 40% of kids today are transgender when it was like 6%, like five, six years ago. And that to me seems like a large increase and an issue because it seems like, I mean, could it be 50%, almost 50% of the people today are, are dabbling in this, trying things out, trying to figure out who they are? We've been doing this forever, but I never wanted to be called something that I'm not. Or I never wanted to make something up that people should call me. And I never wanted to completely change who I am surgically. And that is the basic thing that I'm getting to today is that the surgeries are what's the scariest part of all of this because I don't, man, I don't know if people or if the younger generation understands this, but surgery is permanent. And I will tell you this right now that the majority of the people that I talk to today, that I deal with, with injuries and uh, problems with the body and getting older and getting hurt in jujitsu or getting hurt on the job, the last thing we all try to do is get surgery. 
It's the last thing. My shoulder's all messed up. I would rather do PRP injections with stem cells and 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 then along with testosterone uh, replacement therapy to rebuild the muscle in the joints and maybe get some life back into the ligaments of my shoulder before I would ever go under the knife because we know or or people my age know how seriously how serious and how permanent surgery is and i don't think the kids understand this today they just see this stuff being done and they're like i want to do that and when i was a kid i wanted to be he man i wanted to uh be bill nye the science guy i i wanted I wanted to be people I wasn't, right? We all want to be somebody who we're not. But the thing is, is that I never wanted to go in for surgery or hold it against my parents as child abuse for them not allowing me to get the surgery, which I think is really twisted. And the, uh, the, the, the thing that I see happening a lot right now is... What we are looking at today is uh, states that have restricted gender-affirming care for trans youth. We now have to put in a law to stop these kids from asking their parents for permanent surgeries to change them into what they want to be at a young state of mind, which I'm sorry, I'm so sorry to say this, but you are not going to be thinking this way in a couple months, in a couple years. You need to develop. So when I saw that there are states that are finally restricting this, I was like, oh, well, thank goodness people are actually thinking about the child's safety by stopping the parents from allowing their children to get these surgeries. I'm going to go through the list, try to go through it really quick. Um, But right now, um, I'm noticing you got Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and West Virginia right now have all put a law into place to restrict this gender-affirming surgery. And I think that is a very good thing because I'm sorry, but you need to wait. I get it. If you want to be this thing, right? And that's fine. It's fine. You can be the thing. But make this decision when you are an adult. And do it on your own. And then, at least then, nobody else is responsible for your decisions except for you. You shouldn't be putting... the the responsibility on your parents because now what can happen is that what if you turn out to be unhappy with what they allowed you to do? Well, now you are mad at them for allowing you to do it, right? And you don't need that in your life. Boy, is that a stressful situation to be in. So I think that all children have great imaginations and they all want to be things that they're not, but unfortunately, those are childhood um, wants. They're childhood dreams. And we, as adults, look back on those and go, man, that was kind of silly, huh? I'm glad I didn't do that because, man, that is not what I want today. So just... Think about that before you are thinking about putting yourself under the knife to permanently change yourself forever. All right? Let's see here. 
Um, well, you know how I, I I love global warming, and right now they're saying that uh, January 2024 global SSTS highest of record for January ever. Um, all of our oceans, global ocean temperatures breaking records. World Meteorological Organization says. Boy, oh boy, I can't read, huh? Let's check this out, though. Forecasting our future now and some brand new information from the World Meteorological Organization. Global ocean temperatures have reached record highs in January, highest they have ever been for the month of January. And in the North Atlantic region right here, February, ocean temperatures were warmer than any other February, March, and all but three Aprils going back 171 years. Part of the reason for that, El Nino. It peaked in December, is one of the fifth strongest on record. And indications are we may hang on to a weakening El Nino through May, but thereafter we may go into a more neutral phase. And that is somewhat concerning because El Nino brings more wind shear. Without that, heading into the hurricane season with less wind shear and warm ocean water temperatures, we may have an increased number of storms this hurricane season, which, of course, begins June the 1st. Our oceans are overheating. Hmm. They're the hottest they've ever been. I can't say whether or not this is supposed to happen if it's our fault um, or if this is just, you know, like I said, I think it's just supposed to happen. I don't think because we can't, we can't uh, control any other country and we can barely control our own. Um, and without all of those pieces being collected, you're never not going to have global warming, right? It's going to happen because we can't control China. We can't control Africa. We can't control, I mean, the way that they make meth and other things in other countries, <clears throat> and they do it on in the woods, and they ruin Acres and acres of land. Um, the the rainforest is just being gutted by these, um, you know, militia groups just going in there and cutting down trees and stealing oil and doing all these things. And when they do these things, they completely ruin the entire environment to get it done. They don't care about regulations or pollution. They just do. Because why? Because they're trying to survive. They're trying to put food in their children's mouths for the most part. And they have no other way of doing it, living in the countries that they live in. And um, so because of that, I don't think we could ever stop global warming. But I also don't believe that it's the U.S. that's causing the majority of this. I believe the... U.S. has actually done one of the better jobs of stopping pollution, even though, as of right now, uh, they're saying that, um, yes, okay, I got it right here. So, as of March 2024, the U.S. Department of Justice and Environmental Groups have sued Campbell Soup for allegedly, um, that the, allegedly alleging that the company has been polluting Lake Erie. So, look, it is it is still happening here. It's not that it's not happening. It's just that we catch them, we stop them, we sue them, and we make them pay for the damage that they have done. And then, hopefully, they change what they're doing, which will probably change the taste of Campbell's soup. And then, now, where that company is no longer polluting in the way that it was. But I didn't know that Lake Erie was getting polluted by Campbell's soup until the other day. So even though we do better here than almost any other country on this planet about our pollution and manufacturing and doing things, we can't stop everyone. We can't. But again, with all the volcano eruptions, is it just that making the ocean warm up? Right. If we have more 
volcanic eruptions around the world. That means there's more hot liquid magma underneath the ocean surface, which would warm the waters, right? So is it naturally occurring? Is it our fault as people, the humans, or is it a mixture of both, right? And is there any way to actually slow it down without um, everybody else getting on board besides the U.S. and the other couple countries that follow our procedures, which I don't even think all of them do as good of a job as we do. And I don't think we're doing that great of a job. I don't. I'm not saying, like, we're, do- we're killing it here and zero, you know, emissions and no carbon footprint. But are we doing better than most? I, I, think, I think we're in the top 20 for our pollution, you know, which is probably a good place to be, but it may not be the best. But it's definitely better than most. So, I don't know. This whole climate change, global warming thing is, again, to me, just a scare tactic for everybody. It has been since I was a kid, except the opposite was happening. We were worried about the earth freezing. And I will tell you this much. I will take global warming over global freezing any day because we can somewhat deal with the heat, right? We can find a way to cool off, I hope. But if it gets cold, it is hard to get warm. And there is no uh, real way of protecting yourself um, from the cold as the amount of ways that we have to protect ourselves from the warm, I believe. I don't know. What do you think? Comment. So we got these new ghost sharks. Now, um, some of you might know this, but I did not, that they have actually, they said that this was brand new, but the earliest video I can find of people uh, catching these things, handling them, uh, videos of them underwater, uh, about seven years ago. So why would I see an article saying that they're brand new if I can only find videos of them being seven years old? And is seven years old considered brand new? Because that's about the about, that's about the time I have on my sobriety from alcohol, and it doesn't seem brand new to me anymore. It seems kind of old, you know? Uh, but this is what it looks like. Uh, I think I can make it a little bit bigger for everybody at home. And then I'm going to go over to here because they actually do have video of it uh, swimming around. It is freaky looking, but these are called ghost sharks. So I can't play the music in this. And this is the first ever footage, pointy nose, blue camera, which lives in the deep sea. It's crazy looking. Live sharks. Uh, skeletons are composed of cartilage, not bone. Weird, huh? They are odd looking, though. Uh, the small dots around their head are believed to sensory organs that help them find food. Because it looks like they're blind. Like, that is just a... Previously, this strange looking fish was found only in the southern hemisphere. Oh, so it's moved. In 2009, researchers observed the fish for the first time off the coast of Hawaii in California. So, again, another one that's been migrating. Okay, so that's what makes it new because they're finding it in new places. Uh, Unlike other chimeras or ghost sharks, these species seems to prefer a rocky habitat. Oh, so they like to be around the coral reefs, the rocky bottom. Huh, it's very interesting, isn't it? I just, like I said, it's it, it's just a wild-looking animal. And now, um, you know, that video there is is like seven years old, I think, according to this. Yeah, seven years ago, 11 million views from National Geographic. This is the earliest video I could find of it. So, obviously, we've known about these things for quite some time. And now that they've migrated to different waters, now it's a new finding is what I'm going to have to assume. But I thought they were just really neat. I've never seen them before, and I thought they were cool. 
Um, but all cartilage, almost see-through, black, deep eyes, and they have sensors on their head to find food because, obviously, those eyes are dead, just like them, dead inside, <laughs> dead inside. So Sora is uh, open AI, just dropped new Sora videos, and they have, you have to see them to believe them. I mean, some of these things, you can, it's just a repeating clip. I can um, try to make it a little bit bigger for everybody. Boop, 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 boop. So, I mean, this is just insane. This is somebody just saying, I want a blue man, pointy ears, whatever, jean jacket and a shirt with a hat on, walking through a city. Boom, there it is. All made up for yourself. This is somebody's actual art gallery. They have all of their pictures and all of their art and all of their statues documented and photographed. And then what he did was, is he was like, hey, I want to make a gallery with all of my art and I want people to be able to walk through it. So we put that all into Sora and this is what it comes up with. I mean, beautiful. It's amazing. It's literally going to put hundreds of thousands of people out of work. Um, look at this. They're having like a podcast thing or a dinner and this is all open AI Sora. It looks like they're in a cup of liquid floating on top of it. It's moving underneath their feet and the background is just amazing. There's like these, what, you, what is that thing called that you would see above uh, Australia and it's like the lights and the, the, the sky and the clouds there and it just, I mean, it, it is absolutely incredible. I don't know what that thing is called, um, but stuff like this. This is a person's face and their eyeball is earth. I mean, this looks so fucking real. It's, it blows, it absolutely blows my mind. And I just think that this is wild because when this gets to the point where it can actually duplicate what we are capable of producing in a Hollywood studio, it's going to be a game changer for everybody. Um, when this thing can edit a video like we can edit a video, I think it's almost there, but I've heard some chit-chat about it doesn't quite get it all. So even though you can have it edit your videos and podcasts today, maybe even your music, um, it's still not as dialed in as a professional would be or somebody who does it on the regular. So like I would notice a few things that it didn't take out that it probably should have or maybe it took out something that I would have left in. You, you don't know until you try it. But it's just not at the point right now where it's capable of really duplicating that human experience and that human knowledge that where we focus on one thing, right? We, we, we become a professional in one thing. That's what we do. And open AI, well, that's like a jack of all trades in a sense, right? Which is a master of none. So we can do everything. We just can't do everything well. And that's only today. Uh, what are we going to do when it actually can do everything well? I mean, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting because I see I see more people going out of work. And the way that places are closing their doors today, I mean, Best Buy's I think it said it was closing over 100 locations. Best Buy Best Buy is now planning on closing doors. Does does anybody see a bright future anymore? Does anybody see a possibility of being able to just, you know, have this American dream we've all been promised? Because I talk to a lot of younger people and they don't see it. They don't see the American dream being reachable no matter what they do today because every time 
we all try to get ahead, something else takes it away from us. Something else makes it so that I can't put gas in my car. Another war, I don't know, who, who knows, a ship gets sunk with hundreds of barrels of oil and then all of a sudden, skyrocketing. Because there's so much conflict going on right now that no matter what we do or what job we have, inflation is inevitable because people are causing it to happen because they're using it like a weapon. And until this conflict calms down or stops, I just don't ever see it getting any better. And the, um, I don't know if it's the IRS, but they decided not to change the, the interest rate again. So two times they had a chance to bring it down, and two times they left it exactly where it is. Again, taking more money from us. Um, you know, so these things are not to help us. Um, these things are just to take more money from us so that they can take it and give it to the war machine, you know, and they're going to just keep doing it over and over and over again, as long as we have this, uh, administration in office. And do I think that the other administration is going to do any better? I hope it does, but I don't believe it's going to. It's going to feed its own agenda. And if its agenda is... Uh, obviously, the agenda of the Republican Party is different. But again, at the end of the day, I don't think their agenda is to help us. I don't care what any of them say. I just, I, 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 I'm the, I'm the type of person where I will believe it when I see it. And so far I have not seen anything that shows promise. Um, so we got a lot of stuff going on with robots and human noids. Um, this one here, Bay area companies get funding boost for humanoid robots. Robots are here. And they're raking in venture capital money by the hundreds of millions of dollars. The Bay Area just got a huge robotic Whoa, boost. Our business loud. and tech reporter Scott Budman is here to show us the latest. Scott. Well, hey, Garvin, call this the latest rise of the robots. In this case, using AI to learn how to do tasks like lifting, moving, mowing your lawn. And investors are taking notice. It's sleek and comes wow. with a big bank account. Figure AI, based in Sunnyvale, just notched venture investment to the tune of $675 million, valuing wow. the company, which makes these humanoid robots, at $2.6 billion. And the whole goal here is to have billions of these in the market and actually be in the home. Greg Hill is a venture capitalist investing in Figure. He says the point of these bots is not to intimidate us, but to help make our lives easier. Thanks. We're all very busy. Um, imagine a robot doing your dishes, washing your clothes, looking after your kids, safety. Looking after you know, the kids? Watching your house. Um, it's it's kind of like endless possibilities. It's AI being an unleashed into the physical world. Also in the physical world, whoa. electric sheep. Based in San Jose, oh, this whoa, is also it's an edger. a bot. What? So what happens when edger AI and leaf blower? Using AI to get smarter about mowing your lawn. Shut it's also up. venture based and has big plans for expansion. We see billions of these, you know, cute little Wally like animals. What? You know, animal like caretaker robots who are really out there to just help us, you know, keep the, you know, take care of the planet in a sustainable manner. Yeah, billions clearly being the word Whoa. of the day. This is venture funding, the likes of which we've really only seen recently in the AI space. Both of these robotic companies, and you can throw Tesla in this mix too, want to handle the menial tasks. Think ChatGPT, but instead of writing or organizing files, they would clean and move heavy things. Holy shit. That's crazy. I mean, I've been talking about these things, doing your laundry and being in your house and doing all this, and they are just getting, I, I feel like it is like daily. They are advancing 10 times. 
every day, which means these are going to be wild in a couple years. I mean, I got a few of these right now. These things are so wild to me. Look at this thing. All right, so this robot is just walking at massive speed. Which, this is the fastest I think I've ever seen him move. This is probably the most realistic speed I've ever seen. I mean, look at this. This is incredible. The way it's moving its feet and its hip motion and the arms. And these guys are actually dancing at a good pace. I don't know if you remember the podcast. Oh, look at that jump. Ooh, ooh it stumbled a little bit, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. Then you got the little dogs. Everybody's making these things now. Um, actually, if you don't know much about the dog robots, um, I do believe uh, California or somebody's police department just used them um, when there was a problem with a bus or something. Look at that. 16 centimeters. It's a narrow scope. And it's going to friggin' turn around and go back down. Wow. Its feet are so narrow, it's so odd. But that is wild, everybody. Absolutely wild to see these robots moving at almost human speed. Which means that the possibilities of these things walking next to us in the streets or in our house or in our factories uh, is just getting closer and closer to reality. Now, NVIDIA Groot versus Tesla Optimus, competing paths to humanoid robots. Uh, I, I wanted to see this because I, I wanted to see the Tesla robot, and there's not much footage on it except for the one that I showed you uh, earlier in one of my podcasts of it uh, scooting around the Tesla lab, and that was moving at a speed of 2.1. So the one that we just watched is a speed of 3.3. So, getting faster and more realistic. Uh, but let's see how NVIDIA Groot versus Tesla Optimus. So Jensen Wong took to the stage in March with a fleet of humanoid robots, including some familiar faces from what the future's past. But one big player in the humanoid robotic space noticeably absent was Tesla's Optimus robot. This thing, what is this it is very sleek about how looking. NVIDIA it's is very positioning sleek. itself in the humanoid robot market. And in what ways is Tesla's competing approach both similar and different to NVIDIA's? Let's get wow. into it. Nine humanoid robots were brought on stage to ring in the announcement of NVIDIA's Project Groot, which stands for Generalist Robot Zero Zero Technology. Yeah, uh, that's what? really what it stands for. NVIDIA describes Project Groot as the foundation for the development of humanoid robots. I call that green them one to a understand human language and replicate human movements yeah, that simply one. by observing them. This sounds strikingly similar to how Tesla's Optimus robot learns from video data inputs like human demonstrations. NVIDIA also demonstrated how the robots using its platform can train in simulation, an important tool for robotics developers because it is generally much faster and more cost efficient to train in simulation than it is to train in the real world for hopefully obvious reasons. Tesla, oh, on the other hand, what? does not emphasize simulations as Wait part of its minute. Optimus robot development. Perhaps. So you're telling me that you're going to be able to train these things through a computer program and then put the computer program into the actual robot and it will have already learned everything. Is that not fucking Matrix shit, right? Where they would plug it into the back of their head and download all the information and then they would just be able to do it? That's that's the same. It's the same. It's just on a robot instead of the human brain for now. Because it's building off of its own in-house AI, which is trained on vast amounts of real world data gathered at least in part by the driver's mm. assistance in Tesla cars. Right. During NVIDIA's big announcement, humanoid robots from several of the big players in the space were oh, present, that's Atlas. including Digit from Agility Robotics, Atlas from Boston Dynamics yep. and more. This announcement Atlas seemed to be crazy. NVIDIA's way of starting to position itself as a provider of key building blocks for companies developing humanoid robots. NVIDIA also announced new hardware with its Jetson Thor computing system, designed to provide the speed and power needed to work with the variety of humanoid robots using Project Groot. 
Tesla, on the other hand, seems to be aiming at keeping much of the production of its Tesla bot in-house, leveraging the lessons learned and tools developed for making its cars, rather than partnering with companies like NVIDIA to provide those services. Yeah, that makes this sense. This desire to forge its own path has paid off for Tesla in the past. For example, by building out its own supercharger network, initially designed only for Tesla owners, Tesla is now starting to offer its EV charging infrastructure to drivers of EVs from other companies, mm. for a price, of course. Okay. Perhaps Tesla has a similar goal in mind for the AI systems driving Optimus. Which approach do you think will lead to better robots? And are you excited to see humanoid robots out in the world or mildly terrified? Absolutely insane. Insane. So these things are becoming more and more and more. And I said it already, but I feel like these things are advancing every day. Um, but yeah, really crazy to see how they're going to train these things how they can do it digitally and then download the information into the robot. And then it's just going to be able to do what it already did through a simulation, which is just mind blowing. And the advancement that they just keep getting faster and more human like is wild. Huh? Let's get into some fun here. All right. So me and Elijah have been talking on Instagram. He's been sending me some stuff and I wanted to share it with all of you. A um, couple quick reads and then uh, one uh, video towards the end. But right now, what I'm looking at here is uh, breaking. This is done by uh, Patrick Webb at Real Patrick Webb. Uh, breaking. Newly leaked documents revealed that the Pentagon is funding a new $40 million AI program through DARPA with the code name Carcosa which is the same name used in the HBO TV series, True Detective, which was a place where an elite pedophile ring performed sexual ritual abuse on children. There is a document at below it. Um, every time I add these links in, they don't work for some reason, so you're going to want to look up uh, Patrick Webb. That's P-A-T-R-I-C-K-W-E-B-B. -B. Um, and it is at real Patrick Webb. So go and check this out because this shit is crazy that they are going to be doing their own AI through a possible uh, program that was named in an HBO show as a organization that abused children. I mean, it, it, it sounds spot on for our government to do something like this. I mean, why wouldn't they do this, right? They're all about the pedophiles. Um, it, just, it just bothers me so much. Princess of Wales Kate Middleton has cancer is in undergoing chemotherapy. This is like the big thing right now is that like at first everybody was like, oh no, she was stabbed and... He was all bruised up, and now it's possible cancer that she's getting treated for. I don't know why everybody's so obsessed with the friggin' uh, princess and the queen and the king. I don't understand your desire for any of this information. To me, it's all kind of, who cares? I don't live in England, and we don't live under a, ki queen, a king and queen, and so... Why is it we feel this attachment? Like, if you're from Europe or, you know, you're from that area, I get it. Or maybe your parents were born there, so you, 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 you pay more attention to it because it's part of your, uh, I don't know if it's called heritage or lineage or whatever. But, man, it really confuses me that so many people are obsessed with the, the royals, I guess you could call them. Um, reports ongoing terrorists shootout at moscow concert hall leaves at least 100 casualties it is up to 133 casualties and uh president putin or dictator putin is um he he wants to um get retaliation i, I can't remember the exact word that he used but all they're doing is letting us know about the real plague they've unleashed on humanity with 
their vaccines. Cancer is the keystone on the free Mesoic royal arc. The royal family is the head of the masonry today and is 322, a highly Masonic date because it's, it's the spring equinox. The queen's first cousin is the current grandmaster of the United Lodge of England. He celebrated his 88th birthday the day after Israel went to war over Salome's temple. Yale University also turned exactly 322 years old. How about this coincidence? It's 322, and today there was another act of terrorism. The Muslim Brotherhood was found on 322. Hamas is an offshoot of the Brotherhood. The founder of Hamas was reportedly assassinated on 322. Harry Truman was a 33-degree Mason and the the 33rd president of the United States. He colluded with the Nazis under the secret government program called Operation Paperclip, if anybody remembers that. One of the Nazi scientists they brought over to the U.S. was a man named Kurt Blom. Blom specialized in researching cancer-causing vaccines and plagues. How many even know about this? I know about this. The first Nazi concentration camp opened up 322-33. Nazis wore Masonic symbols, including the Templar cross. There will be a black sun in 18 days. And I do believe that's the eclipse that's coming up. Uh, resistance is staying out of the cancer ward. Lower inflammation. Don't play along with the political theater and expose this sadistic cult. These are all things that are happening today, right? I told you I'd go through a few more of these pictures. So King Charles diagnosed with cancer. First UK patients receive experimental MNR, mRNA therapy for cancer. Uh, that's a new thing. Yep. Then you're talking about cancer itself, Uh, June 21st, July 21st, symbols the crab, ruling planets the moon, so they're showing you the royal arc, and obviously the moon landing uh, to coincide with these theories. I don't know how much of this um, could actually be proven to be real, I'm just enjoying it. The, the fun of it. Um, Elizabeth II, age of death, 96. On the queen of heaven's birthday, a queen secular dies September 8th, 2022. From Wednesday, September 12th, 2001 to Thursday, September 8th, 2022 is 7,666 days. From Wednesday, March 11th, 2020 to Thursday, September 8th, 2022 is 911 days. So all of these numbers coincide with these events. Now, exactly how and uh, the connections, I don't have that much knowledge in this, but I do find it all to be very interesting. October 9th, 1935, Yale University. From Sunday, October 9th, 1701 to Monday, October uh, 9th, 2023 is 322. It's 322 years, but 322 is coming up over and over again. Now, 322 was already passed, but these are things that happened on that day. And this is how it, I guess, all makes more sense, maybe. Skull and Bones, the Brotherhood of Death. Skull and Bones, also known as the Order. Order 322, or the Brotherhood of Death, is an under graduated senior secret is an undergraduate senior secret study society at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, March 22nd, 1928. Um, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood founded is Lamnia, Egypt. So like, I, I wish I had more information and I understood this more, but it is wild to see how all of these dates pop up, these things happening and how, These dates have already come and gone over the years, and some of the same things have happened, right? Um, Sheikh Assam Islam Hassan Yassan, I hope I got that right, January 1937, 
22nd of March, 2004, was a Palestinian politi- politician and Iman who found Hamas, a, mil- a militant is- Islamist and Palestinian nationalist organization in the Gaza Strip in 1987. He served as the organization's spiritual leader after its founding. So, like, what? Isn't that who Israel just, like, took off the, try, is trying to take off the planet? So, are all of these actually linked? It's possible. Then you get July 2nd, 2022. George W. Bush date of birth is July 6th, 1946. So, again, these things are lining up. It's kind of weird, right? Opening date, March 2nd, 1980. Dismantle date, July 6th, 2022. And then you got George Bush's date of birth, July 6, 1946. You got Charles Pfizer, okay? The guy that started the Pfizer company. Carl Christian Frederick Pfizer, known as Charles Pfizer, was a German-American businessman and chemist who co-founded the Pfizer Pharmaceutical Company with his cousin Charles F. Earnhardt. In 1849, as Chaz Pfizer and Company Incorporated. So born March 22nd, there it is again, 1824 in Louisburg, Germany. He died October 19th, 1906 in Newport, Rhode Island. So, I mean, I can't explain a lot of this stuff. And I know this is a lot of dialogue, but I just find it to be interesting that these dates keep coming up over and over again. And these are horrific, horrific people. Kurt Blom, 31 of January, 1894 uh, to October 10th, 1969, was a high-ranking Nazi scientist before and during World War II. He was the deputy rich health leader and plenipotentiary for cancer research in Rhine's Research Council. In his autobiography, Arts I'm Camp, A Physician's Struggle, he equated medical and military power in their battle for life and death. Wow. So as a director of Nazi biological warfare program, as a plenipotentiary for cancer research in the Third Reich, Blom had a longstanding interest in the military use of carcinogenic substances and cancer-causing viruses, according to the Ut Deichmann's book, Biologist Under Hitler. In 1942, he became a director of the unit affiliated with the Central Cancer Institute at the University of Posen in Poland, angst by Germany in 1939, although he claimed that the work at his institute involved only defensive measures against biological weapons, Hernich Himmler, Hermann Gorin, and Eric Schumann had uh, head of the Wurzmaster Science Section strongly supported the offense use of chemical and biological weapons against Britain, the Soviet Union, and the United States in 1943. Schumann wrote Dr. Heinrich Kili, Kilui, uh, one of the Wurzmaster's biological warfare experts, in particular, America must be attacked simultaneously. So, I mean, these people have, man, they've been wanting America to fall for a long time, long time. I don't know if this makes any sense to you. I kind of already am confused a little bit, but the one thing that I am noticing is that the same thing keeps happening. Specific dates, specific stars, planets, people, aligning and horrific things happening um, because of them. So I don't know if this made any sense. If I lost you, I apologize, but I'll try to add some of these links in. You can check them out for yourself, but I really wanted everybody to see this to kind of bring it all back to the beginning of this podcast. And I think this needs to be heard because this is just getting a little bit much and um, I, think, I think we all deserve to know why this is happening today. Um, I don't know if this explains why, but man, oh man, you can really tell with all of this that we are heading in a 
very bad direction. Today, I'm really proud to sit on WEF's Power of Media Task Force, and GLAAD is a very proud partner of the Partnership for Global LGBTQI Equality, which is also known as PGLE. And PGLE was launched right here in 2019 and is a project of WEF and the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. We work with the news, business, entertainment, faith leaders, sports, governments, and individual activists from around the globe to ensure and educate public people on LGBTQ issues and move policy forward. In the U.S., the Gallup poll this year showed that over 20% of Gen Z are LGBT. We've been running studies ourselves too much. that include the Q, and so it's LGBTQ, and we expand the age from 18 to 34, and you can see nearly 40% of Gen Z identify as LGBTQ. Today, I'm that really is, proud. That is crazy, Today, everybody. That is crazy. That as soon as they add the Q, you go from 20% to 40% of people now. This is insane. In this... This is, I've never heard of anything like this. Have there always been people that are on, you know, one side or the other? Have there always been uh, gay people and bisexual and all this other stuff going on before they wanted to relabel themselves as something else and confuse the rest of the world? But the number should not be 40% people. It shouldn't be. And if you're okay with that number, that's crazy because there's just, it doesn't, the reason that the number is so high is because of all the propaganda and the false information that is out there. And if TikTok is to blame for that, then I say we ban TikTok just for that reason and that reason alone. It doesn't have to be China stealing the information and using it against us. How about the fact that you have 40% of Gen Zers today completely not believing they are who they are and wanting to change because of what they're actually seeing today on social media and not because it's what they actually believe in or want, but they want to be part of something so that they can feel part of something and this is the thing or the group that they were accepted in. Well, sorry, but that's a gang. That's a gang. And just because you don't have to get beat in to join, you still got to go have surgery or say you might be something that you probably won't think you are later. So this has all been set up to tear us down. That's, that's it. It's all set up to tear us down. And the more that they just had to, all right, real quick before I got to get going, but they had to drop the requirements to join the military. Why? Because nobody today can act, could actually do the tests. So instead of making people do the test what we already had in place, we have now lowered the standards so that you can make it? Is our military giving out trophies for you showing up now? Is that where we're at? Where even our military is like, well, you woke up this morning, here's a trophy. There's no way we're going to be able to protect ourselves if everybody's just getting a trophy for waking up in the morning. You know? So I'm really scared for a lot of the things in our future. Um, and as always, I'm very excited, but at the same time, I'm not blind or putting my head in the sand anymore. And everybody is out for what they want and, uh, the fuck what we need. You know what I mean? Crazy, crazy shit today. Uh, well then everybody. I have got to get going, so again, I want to thank everybody out there for subscribing. Thank you so much for over 2,000 subscribers. I am 
so pumped. And, uh, you know, in a later podcast, I'll, I'll uh, explain uh, my beginning story. And I've got a company that I want to just light up. And I'm thinking about doing that soon. So I'm just waiting for a few more things to clear. And I will be lighting them up because I have got a story for all of you. But that all being said, again, I thank everybody for subscribing so much. You are what keeps the podcast going. You're the reason I keep coming back week after week. So go ahead and share the link tree with everybody you know. Hopefully they like it as much as you do. You can help me make the podcast bigger. And remember to leave comments and give thumbs up for all of my guests. Um, And then, of course, if you are new, popping by, checking it out, hey, hit that subscribe button, all right? It's the one thing I'm asking everybody to do. It's free for you, so go ahead and click that subscribe button. It helps the podcast grow. And then, of course, if you want your opportunity to tell your story or maybe be a guest on a podcast, well, you got to send an email over to talkinwithtofer at gmail.com. You can send a video, audio, or Type it out, but you got to send the email over to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And then, of course, you can also email if you want to get yourself a new shirt. All right. These are available. Like I said, I have limited sizes and colors at this moment in time. Uh, But again, just send an email with the size And I will let you know what colors I have in that size. And then, of course, it's going to be $25 for medium, large. And it's going to be $30 for an extra large shirt. And then, of course, um, right now, I cannot cover your shipping. So you'll have to pay for that, too. Um, But, yeah, just send an email if you're interested. And then, of course, the link tree. Don't forget about it. Uh, Go ahead and copy it. Share it with everybody you know. I thank you so much for everything you already do for the podcast. And that all being said, I hope everybody out there enjoys their Thursday. Have an enjoyable weekend. And as always, I will talk to you later. Thank you.